Good day, listeners, and welcome again to the Three Feet Radio Show. It's a busy week ahead with four interviews we've got, and we've got the Suncorp Super Netball's final series hotting up this week, haven't we, Luke? Oh, we certainly do, Ben, and it's about the only thing that's warm around here is the prospect of the Suncorp Netball League and other netball rumours, which we won't go into on air, Ben. But, you know, I've got to say, Ben, last night was really strange. It got to about 3 a.m. in the morning, and the strangest noise was a mixture of snow and thunderstorms at the same time, although, unfortunately, the snow never settled on the ground, Ben. Well, we're certainly not getting that here in Melbourne. Let's not talk about the weather anymore. And joining us today are the two Melbourne Vixens retirees in Caitlin Thwaites and Tegan Phillip. Hello, girls. How are you today? Hi. Good, thank you. Hey, guys. <laughs> um, first of all, to you, Caitlin, do you feel it was time um, to call your career to say, no, nah, I'm done? Yeah, um, I guess for me, it's, you know, I've been doing this for a very long time and, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to being able to prioritise um, some different things in my life and, and spend some more time with my family and friends. Um, and, you know, but for me, I've absolutely loved playing this season and um, the new challenges and all sorts of different things that have, have kind of come our way. Um, but, yeah, I think... Um, you know, for me, having done it for a very long time, it's, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to those different things um, in my life. And although it is a bit scary as well, because I have, um, you know, I feel like I've done this for um, a really long time and um, I kind of don't know anything different. So, um, yeah, it is a bit scary at the same time. But, um, yeah, I think it's, um, it's the right time. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to what's ahead. And Tegan, what are some of your favourite memories of playing the game of netball at any level? <laughs> so many memories. Um, or well, one of my biggest ones was uh, in 2014 when the Vixens um, won the Premiership, but also I got to debut for Australia at the Commonwealth Games and um, come back with a gold medal. So that's probably my highlight um, of the year. But there's so many different memories that have, uh, yeah, that I've experienced and, and um, had along the way that, uh, yeah, makes it pretty special. And you, Caitlin, surely one of your memories would be those cold nights out at Waverley back in the day. I remember being out there as well for Kestrels. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, there's been so many different um, iterations of the league that we've played <laughs> in and, you know, I've gone from Commonwealth Bank Trophy to ANZ Champs to Suncorp Super Netball. So um, thanks to all the banks for looking after our league. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, it's, um, you know, to, to have been around for, um, for all of those different, um, different leagues and, um, you know, for, for me to have played in so many different teams as well, um, I think, you know, my journey hasn't been an easy one. I've um, had to chop and change and find a different path to be able to keep continuing on and, um, you know, to, to have gone over into New Zealand as well, up to Sydney, back to Melbourne, um, you know, to, to keep finding a way to, you know, to keep my career going and to try and achieve you know, the things that I've wanted to achieve, um, you know, it's been been really good and it's meant that I've been able to meet, you know, and so many different people and learn from so many different environments, um, you know, which I think has, um, has been really amazing. And just speaking of the current environment, a question to well, both of you, and but, you know, what would it mean to finish up with a premiership win? Because you guys are heading into the finals and, it must be a pretty sweet way to finish up your careers if it happens. Oh, I think it would be an absolute highlight um, to go out with a win. Um, and, you know, we have the potential to do that, but I suppose uh, we just have to put our minds to it and play out the season or the final series the way that we know that we can. So we're hoping so, but, yeah, we'll just see how it plays out. And just on the finals to both of you, you are playing the Lightning again for the second time in as many days. What is it that makes the Lightning so good? They've won the, um, quite a few premierships now. 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, they're obviously a really great team and they've showed that across the, you know, the consistency of what they've been able to put out over, um, you know, over the last few years. Um, I think they're a very well um, drilled team in terms of their structures, the way that they want to play the game. Um, and they're very um, smart about moving the ball and um, what the, their, I guess, strategies that they're wanting to put out there. And, um, you know, they they control the, the moments of the game um, incredibly well and, and use the clock to their advantage. So, um, yeah, I think those are all, you know, huge benefits of, of what that team does. And, um, yeah, we're definitely going to be watching a bit of footage, um, you know, and, and um, yeah, making sure that we're putting our best foot forward again for, um, for the semi-final in a few days. And this is a question I had Ben add in and I'm really happy to do and not to go too far track and make this about me, but it's obviously, but just Caitlin, um, what can you tell us about the time you think you played in New Zealand to Central Pulse and if you keep in touch with any of the former Pulse Kiwi players because I look back on the ANZ Championship as it was and that was probably one of the highlights for me was even though I've never been a Pulse supporter when you came over and sort of relaunched your netbook career I hope you don't mind me using that term but it just you know sometimes you get these good aspects if I might use that term to sports yeah, I think, um, you know, for me, I've definitely hit a few, you, you know, <laughs> one of my favourite sayings is when you're, you're on the road to success, when you realise that failure is merely a detour. And I feel like I've had multiple detours. I've hit a few roadblocks and had to, um, had to find some different pathways to be able to keep moving forward. And, um, you know, one of those was um, when my time finished at the Vixens the, the first time around. and um, I had to, um, yeah, find a way to keep going. And um, at the time, I thought it was the end of the world because um, there was a rule in place to say that if you were playing for a New Zealand franchise that, um, you know, they wouldn't consider you to play for the Diamonds. And that was my ultimate goal was to play for the Diamonds. And um, I ended up, you know, thinking that, well, I need to be out there on court and learning. So um, I headed over to New Zealand knowing that I'd, potentially was shooting myself in the foot for the diamonds and um but you know the amount of things that I learned from being over there in that environment just the fact um that there's different ways to do things um the the ways that um you know the New Zealand players are taught how to do things is very different to the the Victorian system that I grew up in um and obviously getting that intimate knowledge of um of the New Zealand zone um has been a really incredible tool for me to have known and, you know, um, how to kind of expose um, the different areas of, of that zone or how to beat it. Um, I've taken all of those things with me and it's, it's helped me within my Diamonds career, but as, as well just within um, my normal netball. So, um, yeah, I'm hugely thankful for my time that I have had over in New Zealand and um, I met my future husband over there too, so it wasn't uh, wasn't time wasted. <laughs> so, what's next for you, Tegan? I, I believe you're studying for a teaching degree, and can we see you suiting up again for Anglesey in the um, BFNL? That's from our good. That's from a friend of ours, from uh, Mark Heenan, who you know well. Yes. Uh, as for the teaching, I'll have finished that um, this year, so that's exciting. Uh, whether I go into a full-time teaching job, um, I don't think I'll do that just yet. Maybe a bit of CRT work here um, if I need to. And then as for playing for Anglesey, I'm not sure about the outside ash felt court situation and my body. So I'll leave that there. That just makes me want to say they still have asphalt courts. What's going on? It's 2020. Putting aside the pandemic, should we be having like all the flash surfaces? But putting that aside and just getting on to a more serious note, <laughs> Caitlin, do you have any plans to go into poaching or anything like that? Yeah, um, Teagues and I have both done our um, the next level of coaching um, accreditations recently. So um, I, yeah, I guess for me moving forward, I will want to have a little bit of time off to figure out, you know, what, um, what I'm going to want to do moving forward. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to stay involved in the game. Um, you know, I feel like 
um, I've still got value to be able to add in different places and it'll just be a matter of trying to figure out kind of um, what that looks like. Um, and after having a bit of time off, I will, um, yeah, I'll figure that out and, um, and what that kind of looks like. But um, it also kind of scares me a little bit because um, I'm going to be unemployed for the first, <laughs> first time ever. And we're in the middle of the pandemic, so not too many people are hiring. So if you've got any jobs out there, come at, <laughs> come at me. <laughs> and Caitlin, there's another string to your bow too. I believe you have a psychology degree. That's certainly something you could add to your coaching. You look at like a Jane Williams Thompson, for example. She has a science degree as well. So with the psychology degree, it would certainly give you another perspective to coaching as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, I haven't quite finished that yet, Ben, but we're, we're getting there. That's at the top of my to-do list um, when I've got a little bit more time freed up. Um, but yeah, um, I'm incredibly passionate about that wellbeing space, um, you know, having having a psych degree and, you know, just that um, that care aspect for me, um, you know, and, and I've... Um, had my own experiences with mental health along the way and, and things like that. So it's a space that I'm really passionate about um, making a difference in. And um, yeah, that's, um, you know, a, a place where I feel like I've um, developed a lot of knowledge because I've had to myself. Um, but um, yeah, I'm more than willing to, to pass that on to, um, to other people um, moving forward. And potentially that's, um, you know, a type of um, role or, or job that I would be um, wanting to move into. So. And I hope you don't mind me asking this, Caitlin, but do you think then, based on your own experiences, do you think then as time's gone on that the stigma around some of these issues, whether they be mental health or the space people are in, do you think it is gradually being eroded? Yeah, it's definitely getting better. I think there's, you know, there's still a long way to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, for me, I was um, diagnosed with depression and anxiety about 10 years ago. And what that looked like 10 years ago to what it is now um, is very, very different. And, um, you know, the, the fact that people are um, you know, more, you know, kind of um, people in the spotlight are willing to talk about it and make, you know, it's it's doing a great thing to try and reduce some of that stigma. And, um, you know, at the moment, we know that so many people are really doing it hard in, you know, in lockdown, um, current circumstances, there's so many stresses going on in people's lives. And, um, yeah, I think just being able to, to reach out and, um, and talk to somebody about that is um, is a huge strength. Um, for people it's you know to me it's it's not a weakness to reach out it's actually a strength so um yeah for anybody that's doing it tough um i hope that you can reach out and lifeline are a, a really great support there as well and Tika, did your non-selection in the diamonds squad the extended one anyway um was that one of the reasons why sort of you said not nah, now's the time to go to retire uh, I had actually made the decision before <laughs> that took place. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was obviously, a, you know, would have been nice to still have been selected <laughs> and, and I would have still retired. Um, but for me, yeah, it was, you know, it's a great opportunity for other girls who haven't been a part of it um, to get selected. And in the end, I wasn't going to be able to play anyway. So, um, yeah, I was okay with it. <laughs> And just to peel this back on the question you guys don't have to answer, but do you think after England's played the Silver Ferns, they will do a strange detour? Strange considering some of their players are already in Australia and play the Diamonds. I don't think so. I think the um, the plan for the Diamonds at the moment, they've, um, they're they going to, just with the travel restrictions, the having people having to quarantine, all of that kind of stuff is... Um, um, you know, it's it's been a really long and tough year for all of the players, you know, having to relocate for two or three months up here. Um, you know, the, the transition time, um, you know, my understanding is, you know, Diamonds might do a bit of a um, regroup and, um, yeah, and then um, hit the ground running for some test matches and stuff next year, which, um, yeah, which I think will be great um, to start that new cycle with a new coach. And um, I'm sure they will do absolutely amazing things moving forward. And Tegan, just doing a bit of research today before I chatted to you, I remember it well, was um, people's injuries, misfortune have been a positive for you when Ash Howard um, got injured just before World Youth Cup and then Sherelle got injured and it certainly helped you along the way in your career. 
Yeah, it has. Uh, Ash Howard, well, Ash Howard did a, um ACL mm. while we were, um, yeah, at the Australian Under-21s in, what year was that, 2009? Nine. Mm. 2009, yeah, uh, at the World Youth Championships in the Cook Islands. But I had um, actually been selected through uh, someone else's injury, and that was Kim Borgia was injured. Yep. And two days before they were about to fly out is when I got the call from Simone McInnes, who was, you know, the coach at the time. Mm. And then, um, so I got, yeah, selected through that injury. And then Ash Howard did her knee. So I was then starting seven and playing um, for, yeah, the rest of that championship. And then Sherelle uh, did injure her Achilles uh, at the Vixens and paved my way for another opportunity there so yeah there's been an unfortunate um for people to receive injuries but it has provided me with opportunities to play all right girls thanks very much for uh, uh talking to us so it's been a pleasure covering both your careers and uh, hopefully we'll see you two at the albion again on a sunday like we have before back in the past always fun <laughs> I think we'd be going a fair way back there, Ben. <laughs> I haven't been I, there in a while. <laughs> I still go, I, even though it's our lockdown, I still go all the time. I, I did two lots of 26 Sundays in a row, so. Oh, well. There you go. Good <laughs> one. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thanks very much for that, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bill. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye.